Hey, look, it's Mario go-kart racing. For some, this brings joy. Others, PTSD. This is a franchise that's legacy will never be forgotten. I mean, like, no matter if you're a casual gamer, avid gamer, or not even a gamer, more than likely your thumbs have graced the inputs of one of these special Mario titles. Just, just take it in for a second. Just breathe. Like, look at every single one of these and tell me this list isn't remarkable. Mario Kart Super Circuit is a game that absolutely needs an introduction. It is the third game in the Mario Kart franchise. Yes, that's right, the third game, right after the 3D one. And just two years later was followed up by this beast. Dude, I respect you and all, but you just cast a big shadow. Hear me out, uh, don't think of this game as regressed filler. Look at it as optimized portable convenience. Y you see, it, it's all about perspective. And speaking of perspective, this one hurts my eyeballs. I think Super Circuit's forgotten persona stems from the timeline of everything. It feels and looks like a sequel to the Mario Kart that came out almost a decade before it. Honestly, I don't blame people for not acknowledging, let alone remembering this game. It's just so easy to do. Aside from the brief Sunset Wild shoutouts, uh, you don't see very many people addressing this game's existence. And while yes, it may be true that this title didn't bring much innovation to the Mario Kart formula, there's still a legacy here that deserves some recognition. It's a remarkable GBA game that's, in my opinion, not so much mistreated, but more misunderstood in these modern times. So let's talk about it. The first thing that'll catch your attention is its presentation. It's nice to see Nintendo was self-aware enough to know that gameplay objectively wasn't going to be as captivating in this entry, and so they decided to put most of their eggs into one basket and go all out visually. You'll even see this in its marketing, like gameplay wasn't the forefront. They needed to intrigue customers somehow, and nothing screams Mario Kart Super Circuit more than rushing Toad to the ER. It's polished in many aspects, but mainly it's just so crisp. The sprite work here is really clean, and with the environments and tracks being so colorful and diverse, it mixes into the sweet, saturated package that just pops off the screen. And I truly think this was intentional. This was the first portable Mario Kart after all, and to make things easier to distinguish and read during high-speed gameplay is such a nice compliment to the game that does not go unnoticed. Emulating this seriously doesn't do this game justice. Playing this on OG hardware in the the original screen resolution is by far the best way to feast your eyes on these graphics. If you can actually see the screen, uh, backlit Game Boys are ideal. You even see this attention to detail in the most subtle things. Take these track preview images, for example. These are just gushing with personality. They're brimming corner to corner with charm. I absolutely love them. Look at this attention to detail. Impeccable. Lol, me in the summer, uh, me in the winter. I don't think I've ever been so terrified to play Bowser's Castle 3. This just needs to be framed. Like, like the dude is just thinking, contemplating life, his purpose. Don't worry, leader of the bunch. We've all been there. The expressiveness in these images translates into the tracks themselves with various settings and colorful locales. One thing I do respect about Super Circuit is these tracks weren't afraid to be exotic in their theming. Yes, you still have your standard circuits, but then you have this wide scale of theming from racing on a weird cheese planet or a bundle of party weaved into ribbon roads. The track structure itself may not be as dynamic. The reality of it is, it's just hard to accomplish that in a 2D engine. However, the game instead strives to be more dynamic visually. Distinction is prevalent in every track, with each one having prominent landmarks in the background, or others have unique quirks like Sunset Wilds gradually getting darker every lap, which is awesome. It's obvious the amount of effort that was put in to differentiate each track. Heck, this game has four Bowser's Castle, well, technically seven Bowser's Castles, but, but four of them all have a whole different look to it. It's something I really do appreciate. Y you can see the passion and love within the details, and it makes things stand out that much more. And I feel like it deserves some respect in that regard. Okay, but the music, though, is something I feel doesn't need to gain respect, because if you've been around the Mario Kart space long enough, you'll understand Super Circuit has some of the best bangers in the Mario Kart industry. 
Yes, I understand not every track slaps. Yes, I understand the Game Boy's audio is compressed so hard it sounds water damaged half the time, but, but despite all of this, Super Circuit delivers some of the most tastiest tunes that have graced my ears. I don't even know how to properly convey my thoughts on these, uh, so just, just give me a sec. Let me create some static. Hi, you like video game music? Look no, look no further. We got some good tunes up in this place, and uh, take a listen to this, this cheesy track. You'll never forget these classic Game Boy hits, such as Sky Garden. Oh, gee whiz, I, I, I love these tunes, and you'll never forget Rain Ribbon Road. If you want these classic hits, you, you can head on over and call this number. It, it's not, not a real thing. It's not. Uh, anyway, back to your feature feature program. The GBA Rainbow Road rendition is probably my favorite Rainbow Road theme. It's funky, it's upbeat, I'm a sucker for groovy bass lines, and uh, this, my friend, is exactly that. It even has this, like, grandiose intro referencing the original Rainbow Road theme, and I don't know what to say other than it, like, it warms my heart. I mean, it really does. <laughs> Ribbon Road, Sky Garden, Cheese Land, there's so many quality music tracks, and I just, I applaud these composers. Straight up, I'm gonna butcher these names, so it's probably more respectful for me to not even try. <laughs> so we understand the game looks pretty and sounds nice, but the real question is, how did Super Circuit make its mark on the Mario Kart franchise? Well, I am glad you asked. Uh, it was the first game to blatantly show in-game statistics for characters. Oh, it was also the first Mario Kart to properly indicate speed boost when successfully drifting. It, am I am I grasping for straws? Oh, okay, yeah. I may be grasping for straws, but gold darn it, I'm doing it with passion. Super Circuit's gameplay is unique in the sense that it wasn't very unique. It was the first portable Mario Kart, and you gotta give it props for that, but the franchise was just in a different time. Limitations had to be set here, and because of this, it wasn't really the game's main focus to thrust this series forward mechanically, which is perfectly okay. Instead, it utilized the two previous entries as resources and sort of mixed them together to create an interesting combination. It's Super Mario Kart, but now with blue shells. Yeah, okay, that sounds like a nightmare. It stars the Mario Kart 64's cast, while also sporting compressed versions of the 64 models, which I dig a lot, they're incredibly charming. But obviously it's more reminiscent of Super Mario Kart, but now with many new improvements. It has way better visuals, with it being less painful and jarring to the eyes, let's just put it that way. Also, these track indicators, while for some are annoying, are very helpful in aiding and nudging the player's direction. I personally think it's a nice touch that complements your minor field of view in this 2D plane, especially at high speeds. Atmosphere and track dynamics are also enhanced, with many new track elements and hazards, giving these areas a little more depth to this flat plane. A lot of people express their opinion with how the game controls, and like, I won't just sit here and tell Tell you it isn't dated, but I wouldn't say it feels necessarily bad. You know what? I would go as far to say it feels pretty good. I mean, who is with me? Yeah. Okay, seriously though, if you actually stick it out and master how this game feels, it has a very satisfying learning curve. I like how it feels. I know everyone experiences a stroke when revisiting and controlling these three Mario Kart specifically, but out of this trilogy, I genuinely think this one feels the best.
bite me. Now I will say when talking about this game's flaws, it really boils down to two things, age and limitations. While they did a great job to present this game well, this 2D plane is what brings this game to the grave for many. This simulated 3D is simply not as engaging and doesn't age like fine wine. I think it's just hard to captivate players when racing on a 2D plane. It does give off a unique visual style, but it's hard to see or even feel the track at times. They did their best to make tracks look dynamic, but it's a whole other ball game to make a track feel dynamic. It's a challenge to feel the depths of these courses. It's hard to feel the shortcuts of these tracks, which is why you'll see many people remember the theme of these locations. But when you ask anyone if they remember the track layout of Yoshi Desert, more often than not, you're gonna be met with a solid blank stare. For me, I've played these courses numerous times now, and even I have a hard time remembering how these tracks play out. It's just how this game is designed and is probably a big contributing factor to why this game is overlooked looked by many. I see a lot of people criticize the innovation of this title. They point out the flaw that this game didn't really bring much to the Mario Kart franchise. It didn't really advance the series forward in any way. But I feel as though it wasn't trying to do that. Objectively, yes, these critiques may be valid, but I also feel as though this is where the game often gets misunderstood. It wasn't trying to be game-changing. It was trying to give players a solid, viable, portable Mario Kart experience. And I believe they achieved that remarkably well. I'm sure in 2001, this game was a daunting development task, but I understand looking at it now, the portable novelty isn't as vibrant. Despite all that though, what we got here was honestly a solid package, all things considered. This game has a ton of content, you have the base 20 tracks to race on, but additionally, this game was the first Mario Kart title to include retro representation in its track list. And so it includes the entire track selection from Super Mario Kart. This would later evolve into one of my favorite Mario Kart tropes in later entries, remaking and revising retro tracks into modern courses. And I have Mario Kart Super Circuit of all games to kind of thank for that. I also firmly believe Super Circuit was a pivotal moment in track theming. It wasn't afraid to go outside the box. Previous entries had glimpses of this, but it wasn't until Mario Kart Super Circuit and onwards where we would truly start to see original course ideas and environments truly shine. I wouldn't go as far to say this game is mistreated. Nintendo themselves have done a good job at representing this game well in future entries. It was a top seller on the Game Boy Advance, and every so often I do see people pay their respects to this title. The only problem is that every so often is extremely rare. There's no doubt that this is the most overlooked Mario Kart. In fact, I think it's the most underrated. It's a fantastic GBA gem. This was the only Mario Kart developed by Intelligent Systems of all companies. You know, the creators of Paper Mario and Fire Emblem. You can tell this team put their heart and soul into this project. It feels like a game that was birthed through passion rather than innovation. And I think that's the sole reason why this game is misunderstood. It's not the biggest technical novel. It doesn't have the most wow factor. It wasn't trying to be a Mario Kart filled with advancements and innovation. It's simply a Mario Kart brimming with portable passion. So before you overlook this title in this big list of Mario Karts, just remember there's an underrated passion project just waiting to be played. And its name is Mario Kart Super Circuit. I hope my thoughts on this title inspire you to pick it up and play it again because I truly do think this game deserves some more love. Now, please don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this is the best Mario Kart out there, that's just factually wrong. Is it a great game? Absolutely. Does it deserve to be the highest rated Mario Kart on Metacritic? That might be stretching it a bit.